Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenboard, Senior Portfolio Manager with Revere Asset Management. Today is Wednesday, March 1st, 4.48 p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from St. Augustine Beach, Florida, with tonight's Revere Market Insight video. State of the market, holding, clinging to an uptrend, short-term caution. You can see over here on the trend gauge, market leaders still holding up okay. We had a couple more break the 21 today. Uh, namely, five net and AI, and also RVNC, but uh, had, I mean, basically just as many strong double digit gaps up that would be glad to take their place. So, leaders rotating, but not breaking down, pulling back. The indexes continue to pull back, but uh, the key area that we're holding, the 200 day moving average on the SP and the NASDAQ continues to be uh, a strong area of support but as we know the more we bang on support the weaker it gets so we really need to get up and off of here not sure what the catalyst will be there's some employment data that comes out tomorrow uh next tuesday we have uh or sorry next friday usually it's the first friday but uh it's the second Friday is the uh, non-farm payroll report. And then the following Tuesday, the 14th is CPI. And the following Wednesday, the 22nd is FOMC. So we'll see what happens while we wait for those events. Uh, short term, we are bearish. Sixth close below the 21-day moving average. Might be the seventh. Uh, we'll see when we get to the FOM, uh, to, <laughs> to the FOMC. When we get to the uh, tail of the tape, Medium term weakening also, the yellow arrow sliding to the center as we've got two closes below the 50 day moving average on the S&P 500, as we said, uh, neutral on the long term. All five indexes above and slightly trying to flatten and continue to curl up MDY uh, now and obvious if you look at it on the charts, uh, curl higher on the 200 day moving average, but uh, we need a catalyst to jumpstart the market. So what happened today? As I said, second close on the S&P below the 50-day, but both the S&P and the NASDAQ 100 held the 200-day. Uh, Mid-caps and uh, the Russell were uh, led most of the day, and the Dow uh, positive, getting a, a boost after hours on uh, CRM, uh, Salesforce earnings up double digits after hours. So the Dow finally getting a break. Bottom line, G6, barely positive. Actually, five of the six were firmly positive, and Art K was down as a, a bunch of Kathy Woods names got uh, slammed today. So uh, that's masking the strength, actually. S&P down 0.47%. NASDAQ 100 down eight tenths, big cap tech getting hit again as interest rates uh, pierced 4% on the 10 year today. Dow barely positive, mid caps up 0.25%. Russell uh, up a tenth of a percent. Global diversified 60 40, barely negative. In house protection down 0.4%. We will get to uh, the tail of the tape and the charts. Let's start off as we always do with the indexes. Uh, you can see here the S&P 500 bouncing off the 200 day moving average again. Let me bring up a 15 minute chart of this. Uh, here we have 3940, which is the 200 day moving average. So you can see it was tested here on the 24th. Uh, that was last Friday. Tested multiple times today and it held. Uh, 3950 is a key support resistance area. We've been uh, observing that too. But here's here's the issue. This 3970 uh, level. Uh, that's the 50-day, right around the 50-day moving average. And you can see that it looks like it has flipped from support to resistance, at least by today's action. Uh, barely closed below it today. Last week on the 24th, clearly a close below it. Then we got back above it and pulled back to it. But it was support on the 22nd, support on the 23rd, broke below it, resistance on the 24th, back above, support on the 28th, uh, barely closed below it at the end of the day by a tenth of a percent. And then today acted like resistance every time 
uh, we got into it. We need to break back above that 3970 area to give the bulls some breathing room. Note on this 15 minute chart, we're oversold coming off. Let's check the 60 minute chart, very oversold, starting to hook back up. And on the daily chart, getting deeper uh, oversold for about a week now, holding on to this 200 day moving average. Really what stocks need to do is um, hold right here, go sideways a little bit, try to form a little bit of a base similar to what happened here uh, for this three week period, late December going into January to build some sort of a launching pad uh, to higher prices. On the other hand, uh, if we break down, uh, then all bets are off. We do have fairly solid support because of this base here down to 37.64, but uh, that's very clearly where the danger picks up as we know from this chart here uh, where all bear markets occur usually from the top until a break of the 200 day moving average when you're in an uptrend is 12 percent what it does below that uh, is up to the stocks but this is what we want to do is protect ourselves we get back below the 200 we're only six percent off the highs in this case in fact 5.8 percent uh, judging from the move up uh, off of the lows and then we've pulled back 5.8 percent back to uh, the 200 day moving average here and as i said uh, oversold across all of the indexes here's the nasdaq 100 oversold holding the 200 day moving average dow uh, jones industrial average uh, close to the 200 day moving average today put in a hammer uh, very oversold as i said it's going to get a bounce tomorrow as long as the crm uh, holds on Mid caps MDY uh, holding fine needs to get just trickling ever so slightly lower along the declining 21 day moving average. So, uh, break of this downtrend line and move above the 21 and the 8 is what we want to see. And again, we're oversold there as we are on small cap. So all five indexes consistently selling off. You can see the downtrend line here. And again, the 21 acting as resistance uh, oversold here, but well above the 50, well above the 200 day moving average. Uh, RSP, which is the equal cap S&P 500 uh, outperformed the, uh, uh, the market cap weighted S&P and you can see it's showing it, it's got a, it showed relative strength back here for a while late last year really it started in august when the big sell-off happened with the big cap nasdaq stocks that also impact the top of the s p 500 and you can see its relative strength has been waning uh on january while the big caps uh had their revenge now kind of going sideways but uh 2.9 percent above the 200 day moving average also uh, oversold here. So this would could very possibly be uh, quicker uh, to regain the short-term moving averages, but it does have a bigger buffer down to the 200. Let's quickly look at the QQEW, uh, which is the NASDAQ 100 equal weight. Uh, also uh, much better than the NASDAQ 100. It's above the 50-day moving average. Uh, which is above the 200 day moving average as opposed to the NASDAQ 100 where the 50 is still below the 200 day moving average because of that massive outperformance. It hasn't worked that off yet. What else we want to look at? How about the dollar? Stocks got uh, could have gotten a boost from the dollar today. Note the dollar uh, coming off right on the ADMA hooking down from uh, overbought. Uh, this is a good setup for stocks, but didn't really respect respect it today. Uh, dollar down, but stocks didn't. Well, small caps and mid caps did, but uh, the big tech weightings uh, did not. And that's primarily because of bonds, which we'll look at shortly. So here's the VIX. Uh, basically, three tight closes now showing volatility, but three tight closes. Uh, above the 21 and above the 50, uh, we want to see this breakdown. Starting to hear people talk that these zero dated options are throwing the VIX off also. Going to have to do a little bit of digging on that. As you know, we punted on the put call ratio because of how the zero dated options started to skew the numbers. Um, 
hope we don't have to do it on the VIX, but we are uh, looking into that. So let's go to bonds now. First, the broad bond index, BND, up, or sorry, down 0.82%. This means interest rates higher, uh, making lower lows. Let's look at BNDW. This is world bonds, also making lower lows. Very oversold, by the way. Uh, let's look at junk bonds. Also down, note how they're not making lower lows. These move more uh, in line with uh, with stocks, but uh, not making lower lows, meaning there's not really real concern about a credit event uh, happening. LQD, corporates making lower lows. Uh, and TLT, the long-term treasury, uh, also close to making lower lows. It bounced off this 100 area today for the second time. When it did, we took our profits in TBT, which goes up as rates go up. Uh, still above the ADMA, but we had a nice gain and an especially nice gain relative to what the indexes were doing during that period of time. It is showing relative strength. Uh, we might have an opportunity to re-enter this if rates look like they want to break through and go higher. So let's look at rates right now. Here's the 10-year. Uh, you can see it closed at that uh, th basically 3.994. Topped 4% intraday, a little slight pullback. Uh, the 30-year TYX, uh, not making a higher high. A little bit of a divergence there versus the 10-year, but that means that the curve's getting more inverted. Um, also oversold, but like when it was coming off of or overbought, when it was coming off overbought, it hooked back up. So showing some relative strength there. We're keeping a close eye on this, uh, on these rates, because we know how that they're just absolutely toxic to grow stocks let's flip to gold which is really trying to put in a bottom here close at the bottom of the range but three days up now as you would expect finally coming off of this very oversold area uh, gdx also benefiting from the weak dollar today up 2.2 percent and getting back above the 200 day moving average slv silver uh, second day up, hanging around at its 200-day moving average. Bitcoin, uh, basically flat on the day. So those are the major indexes that we uh, take a look at every day. Here's the tail of the tape. You can pause this to read the details. I'll hit the highlights. Uh, seven days out of nine, we've been lower now. Down nine days, uh, spending nine days below the declining ADMA, seven days below the declining 21. A little bit of news. China had strong February PMI data, uh, and that initially sparked the futures overnight. They faded into the close. After the open, ISM manufacturing data came out and showed contraction uh, for the economy, which is kind of what the Fed wants to see, but it didn't really uh, impact stocks much. Um, tight range all day. Here's the S&P. Let's go back to the S&P and look at it on a on a five minute chart and you can just see how tight the range was. Uh, this, it, you can't really tell from this, this looks pretty choppy, but from 39.39 to 39.68 is uh, 29 points, uh, which is less, less, I mean, much less than a percent. Looks like it's more volatile, but uh, a tight range, but probably about the same range that we had uh, the prior day, 70 to 97. So yeah, we're really tightening up, which means we're coiling for some sort of a move uh, one way or the other. Is it going to be a breakdown or is it going to be a break back above uh, this tight area that we've been uh, coiling in from 39.43 to 40.28 for one, two, three, four, five, six days now? Um, something's got to give. Market only con consolidates for so long before it breaks out. Back to the tail of the tape. Uh, like I said, tight range chop all day. Emerging markets uh, benefited today because of the China news. Uh, oil strong pick, also strong. Again, this is because of the China news. That the, the China economy is strong. They're going to need more copper, more base metals. Uh, that's why basic materials and industrials were up today, along with gold and silver on the downside, the dollar. Uh, bond prices and the, the three tech uh, sectors and real estate. Focus stocks, we'll take a look here at some earnings related uh, reactions as well as a couple of portfolio changes. We trimmed NVIDIA uh, on that offering after it showed uh, weakness. 
uh, and SPXL, trimmed that a little bit with the clear second close below the 50-day, and we sold uh, TBT to book that gain. Bottom line, S&P 500 second close under the 50-day, but the S&P and the NASDAQ 100 support is intact at the 200-day moving average. So onto a couple of charts now. Let's start with uh, NVIDIA. I didn't like the action on this. Uh, today, they had a secondary offering, which isn't really big, but it undercut and closed right on the ADMA, uh, undercut the previous high and broke below the low uh, of the gap up day. So the 2% that we added uh, after the initial gap up, uh, our latest ad, we got rid of that. Uh, NVIDIA, uh, SPXL, here's TBT. We already showed, I already showed that, how we trimmed that today. And uh, RVNC did not have a good reaction to earnings. First close below the 21, didn't break this recent support level, so, so still holding our 2%, 2 position for now on this. Uh, next chart up, let's take a look at uh, three that acted very well on their earnings report. The first one is First Solar. They really upped guidance to a clean breakout of this flat base on 522% volume. Definitely one for the watch list on um, to see how it acts after uh, after this initial big uh, first day move. Another one, SRPT, closed near the bottom of the range, but a big gap up, 20% gain or 632% uh, above average volume as the FDA signaled that they're going to approve uh, a drug for them. Uh, Axon, AXON, great action. Uh, gapped up 10%, closed at the top of the range out of this base. Uh, D-U-O-L, this is a bilingual, uh, not bilingual, a multi-language website, uh, I believe, Duolingo. Uh, big move up, 22% on 409% average volume. we got to dig into this a little bit. And then after hours today, CRM. Uh, CRM is up 16%, trading at 194. So it's testing these highs from back last August. That's a pretty nice looking bottoming cup and handle base and very clearly hooking off of oversold. That'll You'll see big progress on that tomorrow. You see I sent an alert for 195 fish here tomorrow to see what happens uh, in the morning on this one. And that's gonna wrap it. As always, like to hear from you. Uh, Reminder how we handle the markets, uh, how uh, we get defensive under the 200-day moving average. As long as we're above, we're giving the markets the benefit of the doubt, but not uh, adding more than a 1.0 beta, basically, because we're beneath the 50-day and we're beneath the 21-day. So it's kind of, acts kind of like a governor so that we don't get out over our skis and stay in touch with the market. But individual stocks definitely acting better than uh, the overall indexes. If you're interested in an approach like this, reach out to me, Don at or my partner, Dan Stewart, Dan or the phone is 855 Real Wealth. That's 855 732 5932. Remember, it's not how much you make in the markets, it's how much of that you can keep. And with that, I'll wrap up the first day in March. This is Don Vandenborg telling it like it is. Thanks for listening and have a great day.